pray while you turn, and then after you found it, I'd ask that you please stand with me, and we'll go ahead and hear what the Lord has to say to us this afternoon. Heavenly Father, thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for giving me another opportunity, God, to stand before these, your people. I take not, dear Father, this privilege lightly, because I know how serious you are about the apple of your eye. So, Lord, I pray, Father God, that the words that come out of my mouth, Father God, be edifying, dear Father, to you. Be a blessing, Father God, to the burden you put on my heart to share with these, your people. Help us, Father God, to be receptive to your word. To not just hear it, to not just say amen, but to do it. Father, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You found Romans, the sixth chapter and the 23rd verse. Amen. Have a hard, unified amen. If we all have it, can we say? Amen. Praise the Lord. The Bible says in Romans 6 and 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. You may have your seats in this place. For a tag, we'll, we'll use this sermon. Jesus the best gift I've ever received. Jesus, the best gift I've ever received. I don't know about you in here, but there was a time in my life where I received something and I wasn't all the way happy about what I received. Some of you here may have heard me talk about the blessing I received of getting those Jordache jeans and that apple, that orange, that, that, that lined paper, and some type of toy to signify that good fellas love everybody. But as you are an adolescent, a, a young person, sometimes you, 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 you count out how much you are blessed because you are looking at the Optimus Prime Transformer that your buddy got down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can appreciate that good fellows went out of their way to see to it that I had something to open on Christmas because I was overly concerned with the Optimus Prime Transformer I didn't get. And sometimes when you're more focused on what you don't have, you won't appreciate what you do. And when you focus so much on what you don't have, the things that you do have seem sometimes invisible. And if they're not invisible, I'll use a word you guys can associate with, they become familiar. And at times, in this race that we're in, this Christian race, sometimes realizing that Jesus is the best gift we've ever received, we become so familiar with him that it's passe to say thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you just say, well, Jesus is always going to be there. Why does he need my praise all the time? But you see, we, we, we know how to thank God when we pull up in the driveway on them. We know how to thank God in front on Facebook. But when it comes to the sanctuary where it's just you, your truth, and people that know everything about you, why come you can't lift your hands and say, I'm so glad that Jesus saved me. Because we too focused on what everybody else got. And we think Jesus did pass our neighborhood by. I want to enlighten today that when you are planning to give somebody something, you, you usually start thinking about that thing uh, before time. Do I have any major shoppers in the house that can't wait for December 27th to start shopping for 2019? Wave your hand, Elizabeth. Wave your hand, Sandra. The Lord says, I, I gifted you to know how to plan. A planner will get on your ever-loving nerves. Every time you talk to a planner, they ain't got nothing to tell you, but all they're doing is ask. I want you to write that down. When a person has a planning mentality, all they're doing is trying to put everything 
they enter their plan. So if they ask you, they are trying to incorporate you. Y'all can go ahead and say amen. So when you want to bless somebody, you already have those people on your mind. So you start searching for that thing, then you start saving for that thing, and if it's not something that you do at the last minute, you, if you care for somebody, if you love somebody, you don't just run into the, the nearest Walmart and get old anything, do you, anybody? Hmm. Because that will qualify us as a poor giver. Y'all can keep talking back to me. We ain't gonna be long today. But if you just throw something together, you may be qualified as a poor giver. But guys, let me go ahead and, and put that together. That just because you ain't been in the mall before December 24th at 12 o'clock, don't mean you ain't had people on your mind. Somebody that know Anthony Ruffin Jr. know exactly what I'm talking about. I ain't bought nothing. But I know exactly what I'm going to buy and how long I'm going to be in the store, baby. 30 minutes. 30 minutes and everybody's going to be blessed because just because I ain't gave it to you yet don't mean I ain't, you ain't on my mind. Yo, this is God's job. Just because God ain't delivered on what he has for you don't mean that God can pass you by. Get your head out the clouds and thank God for what he might have under your tree. Mm. Yes, Maybe you, you planning or you find shopping at the mall is, is at the last minute because you've been working a lot. I understand that. Yeah. And maybe because you ain't got no money. Yeah. Amen? Y'all can say amen to that. I can't give you nothing that I don't have. Yeah. But if you want to come by at 9 o'clock, I'm giving hugs out from 9.15 to 11.35. But if you come late, I'll give you two hugs because all I got is love to give. Y'all better be true to the game. Don't you be going to bed trying to make somebody that don't like you pretend they like you for one day. If you're giving out hugs this year, you better give them hugs out with a bow on your head. So I want you to understand that, that God has been preparing something for a bunch of undeserving people for a very long time. The Bible clearly states in this verse that for the wages of sin is death. Huh? Now, now people don't talk about sin around Christmas time, so Merry Christmas to New Found Hope. I want us to be a Bible-fed, a Bible-led church so we know exactly why we celebrate. So why would you use this scripture, this verse, when we're anticipating opening up all types of goodies up under the tree? Because I want you to understand that you can't appreciate what Jesus did until you find out how lost you were. People can't thank God when they think they've been good all their life. I don't get in trouble like everybody else, but I can guarantee you when somebody pulled the covers off, you didn't done something. Jesus came to save us from ourselves. Sin, you all, was originated in the garden. It was originated in the garden outlined in disobedience. Disobedience means we missed the mark. Whose mark did we miss? We missed God's mark. Yeah. I'm so glad that the Bible reminds us that we all fall short of the glory each and every day. Meaning that we can't live there, but the blessing is the Holy Ghost will remind you when you done fell off the mark. Oh, y'all ain't gonna preach with me today. That, 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 that God says, I know how lost you are. I gotta give you something to get you back to me. Y'all ain't gonna tell me either. So, so, so but because I realize that your disobedience to have it your way, you on your way to hell. Yes, uh-huh, get tough real quick, don't put grace on it on the end, Pastor. All right, God. That I want you to understand, if you keep living the way you're living, you ain't gonna die one time. You heard the preacher say it, you're gonna die two times. Meaning that it don't matter how much money you give away. It don't matter how much you love people. But if you don't receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you gonna bust hell wide open. I'm too young to be a sinner. You are a sinner because God said you were born sinners. We can't qualify that based on what we think we've done. If we was the judge, we're the best looking person in the room. I'll let you boy. But you ain't the one that's judging this beauty contest. Somebody else can see that your hair ain't done. Somebody else can see that your makeup is messed up. But God can see what's going on in our terrible heart. God is the one who tells people who's righteous and who's not righteous. And the Bible says, ain't nobody righteous, not one. So how in the world is somebody unrighteous going to spend eternity with a 
It ain't about how you feel. It's about who you know. That's why the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. On Thursday, if you still punch in, you already added up all your hours. Somebody that's going to get called in on Tuesday say, oh, it's going to be time and a half adding up your wages. Meaning that you got to pay me according to what I did. Y'all better talk back to me. That I am looking forward to my payment according to the services rendered. Now, if you show up and you ain't gave no hours, I can't give you no money. But if you have earned a wage of sin, we can all look back over our lives and say, I got double time. I even got triple time. I'm so glad that Jesus came to give me out of my sin bed. Y'all know we got a sin bed, right? Yeah. Talk to me. That I got a sin bed. That was this, this, this young boy that wanted his grandmama to bless him. And he says, Grandmama, I need you to do something for me. She says, well, what's going on with you? I, 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 I want to be fresh to the cleaning that. When I walk down the hall, I want everybody to see what type of gym shoes I got on. When I walk down the hall, I want everybody to recognize the type of jeans that I have on. I ain't going to church that much, but I wear true religion. Y'all hear me in here? And I want people to recognize that I got on the things that they talk about in the rap songs. Well, Grandma asked him that question that most teenagers hate. Well, I'm glad to send you to school looking good, smelling good, but I got one question for you, baby. What kind of grades have you earned? Yeah. And that young man said it this way. Well, Grandma, I can't focus in school because the girls don't like me because of what I got on. And Grandma said, come here, baby. I want to share something with you. That if you have lived your whole life and you can't do what you're supposed to do based on other people's opinions, well, you ain't never going to be nothing, baby. And the only reason I'm telling you is because I love you. You go back that school and you get them grades up and then I'm going to be a blessing to you because now you earned it. I can't just give you something that you didn't earn but since you earned it I will be glad to see you fresh to death in school. Do I have a witness in here? Let me give you some scripture. The Bible says in Isaiah 9 and 6, 4, unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. So we're like, say that was a gift, huh? And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Wonderful Counselor, the, the Mighty of God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. That's not enough scripture. John 3.16 says it this way, for God so loved the world. That he gave his only begotten son, and whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That, now that's a gift that keeps on giving, ain't it, y'all? That if God gave you something that you don't mind sharing, that means that you can re-gift that every year. He, that, that, that God gave me the best gift I could ever have. He, he gave me Jesus, but, but, but I'm going to re-gift Jesus every chance I get. That, that when I run into somebody that's low, I'm going to say, I got a gift for you. I know a man that when I smell like reaper, like you smell like reaper, he loved me in spite of how I look. He, he, he loved me in spite of how I acted. Don't you want a gift like that? He wasn't looking for my perfection. He was looking for my faith. I, I, I want your faith. I want you to look past what you can see. I want you to focus on what God wants you to focus on. Here the Bible says in Romans 5 and 8 that, But God commended his love towards us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Uh, I don't see nobody shouting over that scripture right there. I don't even have to preach. I, let me read it again, Bert. Read somebody ain't hear me in here. Romans 5 and 8 says, But, but God commended his love towards us in that while we were sinners, Christ died. Not because he wanted to die. He died because he was sent to die. Who did he was sent to die for? Sinners like you and me. If that don't make you shout, I don't know what's wrong with you. While I was in the middle of my mess, Jesus said, I'll take the payment. I'll take the payment while you got your head in the wrong places. I died for you. I want you to know I love you. 
Watch this. When you're gifted, just helping y'all, somebody went when I was here, let me help you. That there must be a purpose to your gift. All right? There must be a purpose of the gift. The gift God gave to us was not an afterthought. You, you know when it's the late hours and you gotta go in and, and give something away at work? Well, well. Oh, y'all, ain't none of y'all working here, y'all gonna give shit at work? <laughs> y'all think about y'all coworkers all year, what's gonna bless them, or do you go in on the way to work and get something that's pretty bad because I was thinking about you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, 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 so there was not an afterthought that, that long before there was a stable in Bethlehem, before there was a garden called Eden, long before there was a planet called Earth, a decision was made. Somebody say decision. decision. Didn't say feeling. A decision was made that God decided to send his son to save us from our sins. God knew that Adam would fall. Tell your neighbor, God know when you're going to fall. God know you're going to fall. So don't skip church when you fail. the tree that the cross was going to be pulled from to put his son on. Yeah. All right? Yeah. He understood that the forbidden fruit would be the originator of sin. That's why the tree was so enticing. He understood that I'm going to give you authority over all, but don't touch that one. God knows when we're not supposed to do something. That's the thing that's the most enticing to us, spirits. Now, quiet in here, them diets is coming in three weeks. When you say you ain't going to eat nothing, everybody going to bring back to work that day. <laughs> husband going to try to be a good husband and ruin your diet. Amen. <laughs> he going to hold you down, pray your mouth open, and dump them cookies down your throat. <laughs> terrible man, terrible man. <laughs> ruin my diet. Got me up eating at three in the morning. If you hadn't have brought this in the house, was it a contrast between death and life, but it was also about earning and giving. Yes. Stay close to me. There are some self-righteous people that think they can work their way to heaven. Well, well. That's why Paul so smart says the wages, the thing that you could work for, gave you death. Yes. <laughs> but the thing you can't work for was called a gift. Yes. Yes. Can I be smart, Jamal? That you can't say that you earned your way into salvation. Yes. Right. Look how wise God is because if we can earn our way to salvation, we are try our best to kick other people out. Well, because the measuring stick will be skewed. We'll be skewed. The measuring stick will be us. But God says, no, you're not the measuring stick. Jesus is. All right. All right. Jesus was around some 12 people that questioned everything he did every day. For 33 and a half years, he was around people doubt his assignment. And the Bible says he ain't sinned one time. We only been in church for an hour and you didn't sin a hundred times. Could you imagine your whole life not having a divisive thought? Your whole life not backbiting nobody. Your whole life not thinking you was better than other people. Your whole life put God before everything you do. Your whole life praying before you get anything. Could you imagine living like that? That's the measuring stick today. It ain't about how good you think you are. Some of us only good when the lights are on. I keep all assignments. I am prompt and on time. Praise the Lord for that one thing you got going on. What about the rest of your raggedy life? Understand that. That, that, that sinners earn what they receive. By obeying the impulses of sin, they are storing up a reward for sinning. You do know that sinning has a reward, right? There's a severance check for sinning. Anybody ever been fired fancy know what severance means? It means that we, we love you, but we don't want you to sue us, so you fire.
tired, but here's a check. Well, well. <laughs> yeah, we're we'll talking back to the HR guy today. So, so, so severance check is death. Your payment is death, eternal separation from God. But who alone is life? By yielding to the impulses of righteousness, believers do not earn anything. By doing good, you earn nothing. Watch this principle. But you do, however, receive a gift. A gift of eternal life, which comes through faith in Jesus Christ. Meaning that the only way I have eternal salvation is because of what Jesus did for me. He knew I couldn't take what he took for me, so he took my place. That he ain't deserved to die, but he knew I couldn't stand judgment, so he did it for me. I pray that the Lord is blessing somebody today. That you bet not how your lip poked out about not getting nothing for Christmas. You already got the best gift that you can ever receive. Jesus gave you life and life more abundantly. But I wanted some timbos. Don't worry about some boots. Jesus is going to kick all the roadblocks out your way. I wanted a new car for Christmas. And all I got is this jalopy. Well, I want you to sit down and listen to this counsel. If you go out and that jalopy start up every day, you thank the Lord for that jalopy. Because when you start to thank God for the little things, a big blessing is in store. But if you keep on complaining, that lump of coal, you might as well look forward to the same lump of coal next year. While sinful life or wages pays death, God's gift to those that trust Him is everlasting life. Is there anybody in here who has everlasting life? Oh man, the baby didn't drown y'all out. Is there anybody in here who knows that you have everlasting life? Let me clarify if you ain't been paying attention. It ain't about how good you've been. It ain't about the people that you ain't been with. But it's about your trust and your faith in Jesus. Fix it up, Pastor. It don't mean because you got faith in Jesus you can live any old kind of way. Lord have mercy. What it means, the fact is, if you got Jesus on the inside of you, when he reminds you you're out of bounds, you better get back on the right road. I'm on the right road now. I'm on the right road now. Y'all sleep. John 5 and 24 says, that Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed where? From death to life. Principle, watch this. So if I believe on Jesus, I'm moving from death to life. What's the inference? That I'm already dead without Jesus. Yeah. Meaning if I don't have Jesus, I don't got nothing. I might be fresh to death in the hallways, but after 75 years old, you ain't gonna know what's going on in your life. But God says, I promise you something that you can't even quantify with your three pound brain. That you won't have to worry about time you won't have to worry about them achy knees no more. Y'all better talk back to me. You ain't got to worry about your back hurting the way it hurt right now. You're going to have a new body. You're going to have a new opportunity. You're going to be able to worship God all day long. Can I put a pin in it? If you don't like worshiping God for an hour and a half on Sunday, what you going to do in heaven? You know, I'm not really moved like that. I don't know why those people get so excited. Some people be crying. I just don't get moved like that. Well, you ever been to a ball game? Well, and the winning team don't even win the game. They just score. And you lose your voice on one score. But Jesus gave you an eternal touchdown, and you can raise your self-righteous hands in the house of God. You ever get so like Him. There's preparation for the gift, Johnny. Meaning that us folks from Whitney and Dexter across the street from a funeral home, that we just can't give you the Amazon box. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have my boy down there from Davidson and Dexter too, right? Amen. So just because we know that the contents are good, 
we can't slack on the rapping. Some people enjoy the rapping more than the gift. You ever gave somebody something you want them to open it so bad? They read in the car. Ooh, this bow is so nice. When a gift giver decides to give someone the gift, they usually think about the person's needs. Yes. 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 <laughs> Sometimes you might get somebody the same thing two years in a row. Amen. But we talk ourselves out of it. We say, ooh, what they going to think? I gave this to them last year. Are you giving a gift according to how you feel or according to what they need? Far too often we overlook the need and we consider the wants. When we deliver the wants on the list, we try to guarantee happiness of the receiver. Ain't that right, y'all? Many people, even this afternoon, may have lists that consist of diamonds, Sister Bynes. I still ain't here over there. Diamonds, they say, is a girl's best friend. Amen. Brother Jones, brother's mind don't mind no diamonds either. How at you, boy? They're dreaming of a video game where they're going to spend countless hours staring at a TV. <laughs> Thank you for my gift. This is so fun. Some are even hoping that some new clothes will have them so flushed and so clean that you got to visit everybody that day. <laughs> Ain't no second service today, Pastor. Ain't no meeting. What you need me to do? You need me to come up front and help you today? <laughs> now nah, everybody see your new clothes. Sit down. <laughs> Philippians 4 and 19 says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Sometimes you have that grandma that love you and decide to bypass your wants and they want to consider your needs. Uh, let me hear the grandmas in the room. And, and, and she looked at the weather, baby. And she said, you asking for tennis shoes, I'm getting you some snow boots. Grandma, I'm in the ninth grade. I don't care about you in the ninth grade. I don't want your feet to get cold. When you love somebody, they, they, they wants are minimal, but their needs are great. It does no need to ask for something and you forget all about the person who gave it to you. Right. Young man said, Grandmama, my, my daddy always talking about how much money he paid for me to go to this school that's public. And my mama always said, ask my daddy, Grandmama, can you help me get this cell phone? And the, the grandmama said, baby, I would love to get you a cell phone, but you don't even call me on the house phone. God is God, but I just want a man who loved me. 
Listen here, young ladies, whippersnappers. You find you a man who's afraid of God. Let me clarify God for you in this place. Don't you tell me you believe in God and you can't clarify that he's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Why is that so significant? Because the way to the Father is through the Son. And that's the bloodline that he chose to bring me Jesus. Y'all ain't no shout in here. You can't just tell me you go to church. The devil come to church every week. I need somebody who's afraid of God. Because a Christian woman can't get up hell with a Christian man. Don't just be letting everybody hang around and play with your toys. All right. You find you somebody that take good pictures and make pretty kids, but you're gonna have hell your whole life. Find you somebody that loves God, that's afraid of God, and who cares if he don't make a whole lot of money? Can he share his dreams with you? Can he tell you about the future plan that he has? What your prayer list look like, boo? Can I call you? No, what you praying about? Prayer. Holla back, my guy. All right, so the Bible wants us to understand clearly that God gave us Jesus to be sure that I'm bringing you closer to me, not farther away. Because the things that come into this thing called the human head, we run away from God every time we get blessed. You ain't got to say amen to me. You on your face like crazy until you get the stuff under the tree. But after you get the stuff under the tree, them clothes get thrown on the floor like everything else. And when those clothes get thrown on the floor, you say these words, I ain't got nothing to wear. Well, I need you to look at what you prayed for just three months ago, and you got what you prayed for, and you threw it on the floor after you was done. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing to me. Stop saying you ain't got nothing to wear. Say you ain't got nothing to wear you want. I got plenty to wear, but I don't want to wear that. That's a different statement, okay? But God says you might not have what you, you could have, And God, I'll be a good steward and give away my abundance. Wasn't no claps on that one, Bob. I'll low crawl through all these clothes before I give them away. You got to go in your closet like this. Look at this abundance. But yet we fix our minds to talk about what we don't have. What this gift gonna bring? Johnny, we need to give gifts that bring peace. Peace. Sometimes God has given you a situation in your life. We need to bring two people that love each other together, but they too stubborn to know it. All right, all right. Sometimes you just gotta tell people, listen here, I want both y'all at my house at this particular time. I don't care about what y'all going through, but y'all showing up at three, I'm kicking y'all out at eight. Work it out. <laughs> Y'all too blessed to have this one little thing that the adversary is going to use to keep between y'all. As soon as one raised up, the other one's raised up even farther. Can I give you a prescription to bring two stubborn people together? I'm so glad you asked. That one of y'all going to have to be humble. You can't put two wild scallions in the same room and think they're going to pull a cart. <laughs> One of them guys gonna have to get broke. Yeah. All right, and the person that's trying to train him gonna get kicked. So make sure that's your gift, and if you're gonna be a peacemaker, make sure that you don't end up getting pulled into the fight. All right, you can't be no peacemaker uh, picking sides. All right. I want to bring y'all together, and y'all can work this out. But in your mind, you really know who you want to win. That ain't no peacemaker. A peacemaker is somebody that don't have an interest on either side, but the interest is that both people can come back together. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. We're going to get some more crying babies in here. That throw y'all completely off with a baby crying. 
Romans 5, 1 and 2 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Somebody say peace. Peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ. Meaning that we didn't work for the peace we have. The only reason we have peace is because of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. God with me? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Meaning that the only reason I can be at God's foot is because of Jesus. It ain't nothing I can say eloquently in my prayer. If I'm praying and I don't have Jesus in my heart, the only prayer you can say is, save me, Lord. The privilege of a saved person is prayer. Meaning that I have access to the Father because of Jesus. I just can't go to him in the old kind of way, remember, because I'm a sinner. I'm separated from God because of my sin. The only way I have access to the Father is because Jesus' blood is covering me. That's why the adversary attacks your faith and if you say it or not every day. Hmm, we didn't come back. You got quiet in here. The reason you doubt your salvation is because the adversary knows that if you don't believe you say, you ain't going to act safe. All right, all right. Hmm. I ain't good like the mother people. Who good in here? If y'all looking for somebody good, y'all need somebody else to preach. All right, man. You want to bring it? <laughs> to the Father we need faith, right? Hebrews 11 1 says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The gift that was planned for you just provided the opportunity for us to be justified. Somebody said justified. Yes, justified. The way that I'm justified, I want you to hear it this way. The way Jesus justified me, that is just as if I didn't see it. Y'all hear me? I'm justified, meaning that Jesus made it before God just as if I never sinned. That when God sees me, he sees the blood of his son. Regardless of the things that I do, meaning that I will be held accountable, but I will not have eternal damnation because Jesus paid the price for me already. Because of the price that Jesus already paid, that means that I have access to the Father. My sins have been forgotten. They've been thrown into the sea of forgetfulness. That's why we keep a short account with God. I so hope somebody learned something today. That's why you pray every day and ask the Lord to forgive you for your sins. So I have a witness in here. Don't just wait till Sunday to pray. Don't just wait till Sunday to read. Don't just wait till Thursday to pray on the phone call. Open your mouth and say, God, I messed up again. I need you to cleanse me. I need you to wash me off so I can be made over. Here's the problem when we don't ask for forgiveness and I'm out of here. What will happen is you'll fall into this perpetual state of sin, looking at I didn't get hit with judgment, so it must be okay. Come on, come on, man. And you will become less sensitive to the Holy Spirit reminding you to stop. Because if you ignore the warnings over and over, Romans chapter 1 says, you'll be given over to a reprobate mind. Meaning that when God figures you to just ignore what he says, he'll be like, well, go ahead. I'll catch back up to you when you bump your head. Mm -hmm. Holy Ghost preaching in here, y'all quiet today. I want you to understand who we are and where we are and why we should be appreciative of the birth of Jesus Christ. His birth don't mean nothing unless you realize how bad off we are without him. You can sing all types of Christmas carols. You can sing all types of songs. But if you don't see yourself as a sinner saved by grace, it don't mean nothing. Sing till your hair fall out. By gifts like crazy. That ain't what God looking at. God is looking at what have you done with my son. And don't get it twisted. Just because you went to the water don't mean you believe. All right. Can I go ahead and preach today? Yeah. That just because you went through the formality of saying I believe and got in the water don't mean anything. In your heart, you got to believe by faith. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I preach this today. I want to give a gift to somebody that think they say but don't know they say. I want you to find out today with a shadow of a doubt that I know that I believe that Jesus died for me. How do I know? Because I feel his presence in my life. I feel him 
checking me when I go down the wrong street. Every time I start down the wrong street, I feel him telling me not to go that way. But I still find myself in this sinful flesh, Romans 7 and 7, that when I want to do good, evil is always present. Always present. Y'all, that's a gift to be able to recognize that you're missing the mark. But you don't have that gift unless you receive Jesus Christ. Because the accompanying gift of Jesus Christ is the precious Holy Ghost. Yes. The Holy Ghost will remind you of what you're supposed to be doing. The Holy Ghost will check you when you got the wrong thoughts. The Holy Ghost will make you say sorry when you ain't even do nothing wrong. The Holy Ghost will make you check your words before they come out your mouth. The Holy Ghost, you might not be perfect, but you better than you was last year. I got a story and I'm out of here that we understand that sin brings death. Does everybody be with me today? That sin brought upon death to the man. There was a young couple and they were coming back from a New Year's Eve party and they had their four-year-old son in the back of the car and they had a little bit too much to drink but they were driving anyway. I know can't nobody to relate to that in here but they drove anyway and they went through an intersection that ran a red light. They were T-boned in the side. And I'll, be, I'll push the story farther that the young baby died. The mother was devastated that she lost her baby, but she was devastated even more that I shouldn't have been behind the wheel driving. So she was guilty and realized that she was a sinner and she deserved judgment. But the father charges were not filed against them. She received grace. But on the inside, she knew that she was the cause of her baby's demise. What did she did do? She donated the organs of her baby because she says he's healthy. He's four years old. He can be a blessing to somebody else. This could be a gift that may be something somebody else needs. Well, her husband and her got it back together that the year after they went to the local orphanage and they wanted to bless some young people. And they saw this young baby, about six years old, running around and he couldn't keep his eyes off of them. And the young baby he came up and started drawing pictures and he asked the young lady can I show you a picture of the room that I dream about every day she said go ahead baby and show me the young man drew a picture of the room of her deceased four-year-old son y'all stay with me now and she said to her husband this child must be gifted how can he draw a picture of our son's room so they went to the counselor and said is this a special child. Uh, he has a special gift. Uh, he looks just at us like he knows us. He drew the room of our deceased son. Uh, yeah, the counselor said he's gifted. He's able to do things that a blind boy ain't supposed to do. Uh, realized he was born blind. Uh, but there was this four-year-old boy that died in a terrible accident and his parents donated his organs. Uh, so this little boy is blessed and gifted because somebody gave up something that they loved. Y'all missed your shout. The little boy was able to give back to the mother what she thought she lost because of her sin. But God will give you better than you had before when he shows you what he can do with your mess. God can do more with your mess than you can do with yourself. God is ready to give you a gift if you will just lift your hands off of that thing and give it to God. Sometimes you gotta let it go. You can this thing. You can't do no better. You gotta let it go, turn it loose, give it away, and watch it come back to you. What's that mean? The Bible says that we were a dying people. Meaning that we were a sinful people needing a Savior. Jesus came out of heaven. Walked down through 42 generations. He didn't get T-boned in a midsection, but he did get T-boned on a cross. Somebody didn't hear me in here. That the Father loved us so much uh, that I've got to give my son away so billions and billions of people can return back to me. Y'all ain't gonna pray with me, are you? That he says, I love my son, but in order for those people to live, I got to give away the most precious thing to me, and when I gave my most precious thing 
came away to me, people came to me, people that were addicted to drugs, people that were addicted to women, people that thought they wanted to kill themselves, people that thought that they hated Christmas, but when they realized that Jesus is the best gift I've ever received, I don't want to kill myself, I want to live, I want to live right, I want to be holy, why? Because God the best gift I could ever receive. Jesus. In the middle of my mess, he dies. In the middle of my confusion, he chased my heart. While I was hitting and running and going and coming, he still died. I want that to resonate with you. While you are sinning, Jesus still gave himself up. That don't give us a pass to just live in the old kind of way. But I want you to recognize the gift that was offered. He didn't die as a, a free pass for everybody. Can we clean it up? That if you come to Jesus by faith, believing that he was born of a virgin, believing that he walked on this earth for 33 and a half long years, that he died. Here's the part that blows my mind. He died for something that he did not do. Y'all ready for the, for the kicker? And he didn't open his mind when people did him wrong. Why? Because he realized what his purpose was. Me opening my mouth is going to change my purpose. How? If you got purpose, people supposed to have a mouth on your neck. If ain't nobody respect, disrespecting your name, that means you ain't doing nothing. All right, all right, yeah, yeah. He didn't just die on the cross, y'all. Bible says he stayed dead for three days. Yes, sir. But early on Sunday, he rose with all power in his hand. If you know that you're going to win in the end, don't you let nobody distract your purpose. Don't let nobody question your gift. You know what God put in you. Yes, sir. You know exactly what God told you to do with the gift inside of you. Yes. Touch your neighbor that's sitting in your seat and ask this question. Why are you being so stubborn with what God gave you? Y'all ain't hear what I said. I said ask your neighbor that's sitting in the seat you sitting in. <laughs> Y'all love me. Y'all be listening to me. I mean, that's a different, that's a different thing to tell your neighbor, ain't it? Why are you so stubborn with the gift that God gave you? Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you. God, you allowed your hearts, the Father, to be open today. I pray, Father God, that the seeds that were pouring in, Father God, will bring life, that will bring healing, that will bring maturity. Help us grow up, dear Father, in your word. Help us, dear Father, be lovers of the Bible, not just preaching. Help us, Father God, to know what the preacher's talking about before he talks about it. Yes. Help us, Lord God, to be familiar with your text. So, Lord God, if somebody asked us, why do you love Jesus? Help us, Father God, to have a hunger and a desire to look through your word to know. Help us, Lord God, to know, Father God, that you gifted us, Father God, to bring more into this fold to know more about you. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you, Father God, for those that don't even know how to say I'm sorry. I pray, Father God, that the spirit of love that's in this place right now, that you give us the motivation, that you give us the courage to make things right that we know are wrong. Help us, Father God, to be that church, Father God, that Acts 2 talks about, that they prayed together, that they stayed in the apostles' doctrine, that they broke bread together. When one or two was in need, they all came together to see about that need. Help us, Father God, to appreciate the spiritual family you put together. Yes. Lord God, if somebody's stuck between two opinions, they, they've come to church, they've repeated a prayer after the preacher, they even got the water. But in their heart of hearts, Father God, they've never been convicted by the gospel. I pray, Father God, that the preach sermon your Father today convicted somebody unto salvation. That it's not a matter of just coming, not just a matter of being good, but recognizing that we are sinners in need of a Savior. 
I care too much about their souls. But I can't let people just continue to go on, going on. Bring conviction to follow unto repentance and repentance unto restoration. And let us the Father be a church, the Father that can help restore when one's honest and say, I've been a fraud. I haven't been all I presented. But I pray, Father God, that your church can be a church that will welcome them, that will encourage them, and teach them, Father God, the ways that Father of Apostles. Yes. You're everything to us. We love you. We praise you. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Somebody might be here. And you've come to church for a very long time. And you want to know.